there's a reduction in commissions and there's a reduction in agents. It, 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 and there are a lot of agents that are watching this now that are just getting by. It sounds like it's yeah. imperative to become a strong listing agent one way or another, or find another business to be in. Then at bottom line, everybody would, who's followed you for years would say that you're prim fundamentally looking at uh, teaching how to list property and run a business listing property. I, would th I mean, sounds like the timing is perfect on embracing well, this or finding something else to do. Because, you know, you know I mean, what we see is Mike Ferry agents generally ha make a lot more money. The need right now is greater than ever to embrace that side of the business. When you mentioned to start that the industry is going to go through changes, I think change is good. The, ch the changes in how we think and believe and act and talk about the industry sure. that we are part of, because we're part of the biggest industry in the nation. The most number of people, the highest number of sales, the highest gross commissions, the highest gross sales volume. It's all, our economy depends upon our industry, right. I believe. And with, if our industry falters, the economy falters. Right. So we have an obligation as individuals to strengthen our position on listing property. Welcome to Vulcan 7 Coaches and Mentors. We have an exciting guest today. First, let me introduce my co-host, Sarah Close. Sarah owns several Keller Williams offices in Southern Ohio and serving Northern Kentucky and Eastern Indiana. And uh, how many how many uh, agents do you have now, Sarah? Um, it's, we're, I think all in, we're probably a little over six, 625, 650, probably with all the groups. So it's, an, it's a fun group of people to be able to work with. So very fortunate. Awesome. And um, and you also have a team uh, and you, you prospect every day. Your team prospects every day and creates a couple hundred uh, deals a year. Yep, absolutely. It's a wonderful yep. thing. Our guest today, his coaching company is the most recognized real estate coaching organization in, in North America. It's kind of where it all began, actually. And most of his competitors started as front row clients of his. So with change in the, the air, changes in the air. So we're going to go straight to the top for the answers. Please welcome Mr. Mike Ferry. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Ren. It's nice to be here. Um, you always have a great audience of people and you have a great co-host. So fire away. Good deal. Well, Mike, it is so great to be able to see you and to spend a little time with you. And as you know, the topic that is at the top of so many agents' minds right now is the Sitzer Burnett case and the findings of that class action lawsuit. In light of that, what changes are you, you know, from your seat, what are you expecting change-wise for the industry from that? Well, I, th I think the first thing we all have to understand is this is going to be appealed and it will take two to three years before there is an actual verdict of consequence. So all the panic today really is just for the purpose of panicking. And of course, we know that the real estate industry is somewhat drama related and they love the drama and the talking about, oh my gosh, can we still make a living? Um, I, I sent an email to all of my clients about two hours after the verdict came in. Mm -hmm. And I said to them, if you never have believed what I've been teaching about becoming a strong listing agent, this is a validation that you should become a strong listing agent. Mm -hmm. And I said, most importantly, you allow yourself as a listing agent to point out the points of difference and the value you offer the seller for the commission you charge. Mm -hmm. So it's very important. Um, you know, I, I would guesstimate Ren and Sarah, and I don't think I'm too far off that 90% of the agents in the United States work with buyers primarily. That's and that leaves a very small market for the listing agents in terms of competition. So what, I, what I'm suggesting, and I've been saying it now for four weeks or three weeks since the verdict came in, keep learning how to list property. That's number one. Number two, I said to all of you that run a team and you have four or five good buyers agents with you, start training a couple of them to be a listing agent. 
well, it changes the cost of my operation. Yes, but it also creates free leads versus purchase right. leads. Sign calls, point. And ad calls. Sign calls and ad calls are much less expensive than buying leads off the internet. And you have your good salespeople handling those calls off the listings that they take. So I'm trying to convince people of that. Um, what's interesting, and Sarah, you and Ren can appreciate this, 1970, um, I was a brand new licensed agent in, in Huntington Beach. Our broker made every agent get a buyer broker agreement signed every time before you put a buyer in the car. That was 1970. We've gone 50 years and we haven't advanced much when it comes to the buyer broker agreement. So I told our clients, if you're going to work with buyers, get that particular agreement signed because, and there's something about the agreement that people don't always understand besides pointing out what your charge is for the service. I said, if I'm showing property to Sarah and Ren and we have a buyer broker agreement in play and they don't like me, they're stuck with me. But what we have to understand is if we don't like them, we're stuck with them. So that, that even tells me more reason to work on taking listings because the contract with the seller is going to at some point either be sold and closed or terminate because it's expired. So you have an easier chance moving away from somebody that you're not comfortable talking to than if you're working with a buyer. Um, you know, I, I just had a policy as an agent that I wouldn't put buyers in my car. So I drove a Porsche. So I couldn't put buyers in my car. But then <laughs> the next thing I said, um, I said, what I want you to do is start training all of your buyer's agents on how to pre-qualify, how to do strong lead follow-up, how to be very aggressive in setting appointments, and how to show property. When you're talking about advising them on how to show property, what, what yes. are you recommending there? Well, first of all, you know, we, we've got to get beyond the, the lawsuit revolves around the fact that there's no value being offered. So why should they have to pay? You create value by being a salesperson and a salesperson does a much better job of pre-qualifying a buyer. Do they have to buy or do they want to buy? And you got to find out the difference. That's number one. So pre-qualifying. And then, of course, being a little more aggressive when you get a lead on the lead follow up, because if somebody calls and said, Sarah, well, we want to buy a house, they want to give you a commission check of some type. Be more aggressive in the lead follow up. So we have to teach that. And then, of course, the showing techniques, which is a series of questions that you ask inside the house. Then, of course, being able to handle the objections and close the sale. So, you know, the buyer's agents, because of the economy for several years from 2012 forward, really didn't have to know how to sell. So we're working very hard. In fact, we're putting together a whole buyer's program at this time just to be able to teach that because we think the need is there. And then the last thing I wrote down, which Ren probably would be considered a little controversial, um, I said to my clients, if you want to keep up with what's going on with these trials, because now there's many trials in play. I, I would su suggest they read Inman News. Brad seems to be the most up-to-date, in my opinion, um, of what's going on. So I recommended that. And uh, hopefully these people will all take advantage of the advice you, th you two and I have. But then the last sentence in the email I sent, don't panic. We're going to be fine because there won't be a verdict for, for three years. Right, right. Well, so the real estate profession's been here a long time. So yes, it's changed yeah. and this might just be another opportunity of change. So that's right. It makes sense. You know, Mike, a question that I had for you is is um, is something that, I, that you've alluded to uh, just a few moments ago, you know, indicating about 90% of the agents are really focused on that buyer business with only 10 living on the other side of the transaction. We know agents struggle with, um, listing property. So they gravitate towards buyers. Why do they struggle? What, what do you recommend to overcome that tendency? Well, if you look at most of the training done in real estate today, um, by all the major companies, independent brokers, most of the speakers that are trainers, you know, they're teaching social media, technology, holding open house, 
And, and these need to be learned, but they're not the focus of the business because those three thoughts do not lead to listing property. So the challenge is, um, and I've challenged so many brokers on this over the years, and Sarah, we've had the good fortune of working together, so you understand what I'm saying. The challenge is very simple. Is the broker got the courage to teach a person the scripts and dialogues necessary to list property? Because they're independent contractors and they'll resist. Well, how well, how good a salesperson is the broker, the trainer, the manager, to get people to shift their thinking? Because it's been our only focus. I've been doing this now 49 years. It's been my focus for 49 years. And actually, the number of agents listing property is shrinking because they're all taking more and more listings. So they're controlling a bigger portion of the marketplace. But it's, it's just a training issue and then an accountability issue. Yeah, it's, it's the most bizarre thing because we watched it for decades. You yeah. know, 90% of them gravitate to buyers. Well, now think about this. Um, even though we know that selling a buyer a home in this market is very challenging because of limited inventory, high interest rates and rising costs, um, the buyer's agent hasn't figured that out yet. So they say, well, I'd rather put a buyer in the car, drive them around, show them pretty homes than have to go in and confront them on their price on what they're going to list their home for. Because in the marketplace today, pricing is the issue. The first, the first issue is pricing. Second issue is commission. And if they can't handle those two issues, they put a buyer in the car. It's just, you know, the, the reality of real estate is the major portion of the agents are not salespeople. They're showing agents. And yeah, that, and a, it seems like a comfort thing and a lack of, you know, you know, it's just like more comfortable, but golly, it's an exhausting activity. Oh, man. Absolutely. Well, well, think about this, Sarah, and you know this because of your position. You can get a come list me call once, twice a week, four or five times a month, and, it, and virtually go out and list the property within 20 minutes. I say, to, I say to agents and work with buyers, what are the odds of you taking a buyer out and showing them homes and doing it and writing a contract in less than 20 minutes? They said, well, it's impossible. It takes days. That's the answer yeah. to the problem. Right. I'm not sure where I heard this, but the statistic I had heard is on average in getting a listing uh, side of the business to a closing is about an eight-hour commitment worth yes. the buyer side being about 32 Maybe I, yeah. you, you very well might've been the one that told me that. Um, but, yeah. but, you know, if you think about those ratios and then understand that so much of that business is not done under an exclusive buyer listing agreement, it does uh, become a little bit ludicrous when you think about that just pragmatically. Yes, very, very much so. It, yeah. It's, uh, it's enticing to say, I've got a buyer that wants to pay in 400,000 and show them a property. That's enticing. The trouble is that it's not as easy as it is enticing. Well, the dead ends. How many times? Yeah. I mean, if you track all the 32 hours that you spent with nothing to show for it. Yeah, the, the statistic, the statistic, um, Sarah, back in the 80s that uh, one of the local newspapers in Orange County did said it takes an, on an average about three weeks of communication and activity and showing to get a buyer to buy three weeks. Wow. Now, I don't know how many hours are invested in that sure. three weeks, but by the time you finally get them to buy, they bought from somebody else. Sure. Sure. So. Yeah. Very much. Very intense follow-up process for sure. That's absolutely. You know, I'm wondering, obviously we have the, the situation going on with, uh, with the class action suit. Y you have a, a phenomenal, uh, position of vision from, uh, with with your with, with what you've created there, what other trends are you seeing in the industry, both on the broker side and on the agent side? Um, what what are you seeing from your from your perch there? Well, what, what um, last week somebody introduced me at a program and they said we want to introduce the goat, and I didn't <laughs> know what that meant. And then I thought, well, I don't know if I'm supposed to be offended or happy. And he said, you, greatest happy. of all. <laughs> Yeah, I'm at greatest of all time. So when somebody said they look down from your pedestal, I, you know, I, I, I feel like a regular guy. I, I, I go with with uh, 
rent to coffee shops and have lunch. That's that's the best food most of the time. So I, I see the biggest thing is the reduction in the number of agents over the next 18 months to 24 months. Um, and I see that taking place in a massive basis um, because I think the licensing schools are going to be very nervous about how they present you to get a license knowing what you're facing in this lawsuit. So I see a reduction in agents. Number two, um, I, I don't think there's any question sellers and buyers are going to negotiate stronger on commissions going forward, even though the lawsuit is not settled. So I, I see the strong agents getting a lot stronger and the mass is getting weaker, which I think would be a reduction in the gross commissions that are being paid over the next couple of years. Um, we make a tremendous amount of money in real estate. And we do it because of the hard work and efforts of brokers like yourself and leadership like Ren with Vulcan 7. So I, I see a reduction in commissions. But the biggest thing I, I see is we're going to have to recognize that if you cannot specifically point out some very strong values to both the buyer and the seller, the days of the easy transaction is going to disappear. And um, I, I see that as being probably the biggest challenge. So strengthening the training, the coaching, the accountability within an organization, knowing that they're independent contractors and they'll fight you. So now it's, it's really going to, I, I, I could actually see NAR disappearing. I could see that taking place in the next couple of years. Or there being 20 regional NARs instead of one big one. Because I think a lot of people have lost maybe some of the hope that NAR is the answer to our problems. You know, um, I, I've always kidded about NAR. You know, they banned me a couple of times 30 years ago and um, because they thought I was too controversial. And I said, when did selling become controversial? You know, so that's when I started kidding about the fact I, I got this from a trainer um, down in Florida oh, 20 years ago that was a Colwell Banker trainer. And she stood up and said, now, all of you belong to the National Association of Realtors, NAR. I refer to it as non-active realtors. That is your competition. So I, I think a lot of people are becoming more aware of what uh, some of the organizations are really doing to assist the agents. And that awareness is going to make some more changes that we haven't seen yet. There's a reduction in commissions and there's a reduction in agents. It, 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 and there are a lot of agents that are watching this now that are just getting by. It sounds like it's yes. imperative to become a strong listing agent one way or another, or find another business to be in. Well, I, you know, you see all these stats and I know um, Gary who, you know, I, sir, I don't know if I've shared this with you, but I've been asked time and again over the last couple of years, who are the greatest influences that you think our industry has and has had? And I say it's Art Bartlett from Century 21, Dave, who ran and started Remax, and Gary Keller. But the, because that's three different models of real estate. Right. And they've all succeeded at the highest level and had the greatest impact on our industry. Okay. So I, I think, Ren, back to your comment um, about a reduction in commissions and reduction in agents, somebody has to step up to the plate and take a stand and say, this is what you have to know and this is what you have to do. But the stats say that, what, 50% of the agents didn't do a deal this year so far? And yeah, 50 generally every year, that's how that goes. It's yeah, 50 and 50 and this year might be 60%. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, NAR collects dues. Um, I'm not sure how those dues relate to transactions in helping agents that are not doing transactions do transactions. Right. And when I say things like that, people get mad at me all the time, but I'm 78, okay? And I've been doing it 49 years. I don't care if they're mad at me. It's a little we late would be worried if you were. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that's all good. Well, your, yeah. Go ahead, I know man. you have a buyer program coming up and 
you know, it, it, then that bottom line, everybody would, who's followed you for years would say that you're prim fundamentally looking at uh, teaching how to list property and run a business listing property. I, would th I mean, sounds like the timing is perfect on embracing well, this or finding something else to do. Because, uh, you, know, you know, I mean, what we see is Mike Ferry agents generally ha make a lot more money. Mike Ferry yes. agents generally have some time in their life to enjoy it. That, yes. you know, that seems to be the, and so I would think they'd be, uh, the need right now is greater than ever to embrace that side of the business. Well, um, I think, Sarah, when you mentioned to start that the industry is going to go through changes, I think change is good. Yes, okay, sir. not nickel, dimes, and quarters, not that kind of change. Right. The, ch the changes in how we think and believe and act and talk about the industry okay. that we are part of, because we're part of the biggest industry in the nation. The most yes, number of people, the highest number of sales, the highest gross commissions, the highest gross sales volume. It's all, Our economy depends upon our industry, right. I believe. And with, if our industry falters, the economy falters. Um, right. And forgetting the political side, which I don't get involved in. So, right. you know, we, we have an obligation as individuals to strengthen our position on listing property. And if we're going to work with buyers on how to sell a buyer a home. Mm -hmm. No, that makes that makes a lot of sense. You know, kind of looking ahead to next year, um, uh, considering the changes and the not and the things that will stay the same. What are your top three recommendations for agents as they're doing their planning in terms of how they can have a phenomenal year next year? What do you recommend? I think, I think number one, Sarah, for all of your top 25% of your agents, in their business plan, they should have to source every transaction that they've done in 2023. Where did it come from? And is it duplicatable? And they will find, in most cases, their primary source is their database. Mm -hmm. So then I'm going to ask number two, how much time and energy are you investing in the one group of people that like you and trust you, in some cases enjoy you, enough to make a big decision? And then we take what you do, Ren, with Vulcan 7, furnishing highly qualified leads. They take the database and your leads they should have a record year. So probably number one is source. Okay. Number two is a duplicatable. And then number three is more time spent with their database. And what I said to a group, uh, I do a program called mornings with Mike on Monday morning, specific time early. And I said to the group, I want you to between now and Christmas, cleanse your database. You know, if you have 600 names, you got a hundred that you don't like and that don't like you get rid of them. OK, then second, I'm going to ask all of your agents to pick the top 10 percent that would most likely give them a referral and then talk to those people every 45 to 60 days because they're the ones that had the highest level of trust with you. The balance you talk to three or four times a year, send postcards, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I then I also said to our agents, Ren, you'll get a kick out of this also. Stop emailing your database. They don't open them up. They don't read them. Call them. Talk to them. Okay. On the way home from work, stop by two or three of your database that still live in the area and just say hello. You know, call them now and say thank you for your support over the course of the last year. There's so many valuable conversations we could have. So I'm also telling everybody that interest rates should come down substantially in January and February. So we should see a re resurgence of good buyers in the market because there's probably a couple million people that haven't been able to buy the last two years because of interest rates started in June of 22. So um, I, I can see the rates coming down. Um, it would be ideal if it had a six. And it's not the second number, okay, in the interest rates. So six dot something, that would be ideal. But I, I see the rates dropping down, and I see the uh, first quarter of next year being probably much stronger than the last two quarters of this year. Oh, that's good news. And it's really, it's, it's, it's up to people like us to instigate that. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Perfect.
you always have some great training opportunities and we were wondering what events are coming up uh, where agents can get involved. Well, we, we do something fun every year in December. We've done it for 30 years. We do an annual two-day toy drive and it's really for Southern California. And we usually have four or 500 agents and part of the fee to be with me for two days is bring a brand new unwrapped toy for a child. And we normally collect 500 to 1,000 toys, which we give to local charities. So that's the Southern California thing. January, um, Ren, we do our annual production retreat, which Sarah is our kickoff to get people their minds and action back in the business. Um, and that takes place in mid-January in San Diego. And that's a big event. Um, but I think our schedule for the year is being posted as we speak today. Um, we're still doing a lot of events um, nationwide. I think we're going to do 24 three-day events. Um, then plus I go to Europe twice a year and do events over there. So, and Ren has been with me in Europe, which has been fun. Um, fact, and Russia, and Russia. Ren came to Russia with one of our <laughs> events, which was really fun. Yeah. Wow. That's Ren and I learned how to drink vodka. It was, <laughs> Just it, was oh, dear. it was bizarre. They had, I mean, the first day, I, he's famous over there. They had a line of like 80 people lined up to get their picture taken with him. Oh, it gosh. It, it was, that's when I found out I was the goat. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> no, no, it's fun. It's an honor to be called a goat because I think of people like Tiger Woods or Michael Jordan, um, and I think they've had a little more they've had a little more impact than I've had. Uh, maybe in their industries, but I would beg to differ in the real estate world. So I think you're right <laughs> up there with them. Thank you. That's very <laughs> kind. So Absolutely. if they want to go to the production retreat, and, I'm sorry, and what, say it again. The production retreat in January. Yes. When when in January? The January 16, 17, 18. Okay. Um, at the Hyatt Regency on the water okay. in San Diego. Beautiful that hotel. That sounds nice. Yeah, it's a nice spot. Um, I think the cost is $395 per person. Okay. Um, it's, so it's very reasonable. Um, the room this year, because they're remodeling the hotel, only holds 1800 instead of 2500 which is our normal. Um, and we usually fill the room. So I think we probably are about... 80% sold out. Yeah, you're going to be sold out pretty as, quickly. As you know, with real estate people, some of them wait till the last minute. <laughs> so <laughs> we always have our big surge the last two weeks. But yeah, the last two days, on that. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. And I'm doing something different this year at the production retreat. I'm going to go through all 23 steps of the Mike Ferry sales system individually. Because, you know, we all we all know about time management and working your database and prospecting, lead follow-up, et cetera. The second half is what I don't talk about often. Customer service, managing your money to make a profit, you know, those types of topics. So I'm going to go through each of those 23 topics in depth with the audience. So it should be a much, and I'm doing it because of the lawsuit. Let's create yeah, yeah. more value they can take these ideas and go back and use them in their day-to-day -day business. Yeah. With all the so, changes so, going on in our industry, it's probably imperative to get, you know, to get, raise the level of skills dramatically. Yes. So that you can continue to stay in the business and well, thrive in the business. I, you know, if you're on the listing side, Mike, is there an issue if you're on the listing side, if most of what you do is listing property, will, will they be affected at all? I, I see a lot of agents raising their commissions on the listing side. Yeah. I can see that taking place. Um, we, we still have several hundred great agents, Sarah, that are like yourself, a strong listing agent that charge 7%. And they keep four and give away three to the buyer side. Now, those are the kind of words that, you know, this lawsuit is all about, but I'm not licensed, so I can use those words. You know, it's one of those deals. Um, but I, I, I see the, the value of a listing agent increasing dramatically. Uh, one, of our wow. clients, one of our clients gave me an interesting little thought last week. He said, what if we said to a seller, the commission that you will pay me for my service is 3%, and then you'll decide how much you want to pay the buyer's agent. How does that sound to you? 
and he's tried it on a couple of sellers, they go, oh, great. Because they That's get to the bargain. There you go. Fishing. Yeah. <laughs> but those are, the, those are the kind of little changes that probably need to take place, which is just learning another way of doing what we do so well. Good deal. Good. Well, this That's is uh, terrific. This is valuable, valuable, valuable when we consider what's coming down the pike pretty quickly. Absolutely. And, and I think we all just need to get ready. Yeah, well, if they, if they pay attention to the three of us, they're better off. Good deal. Yep. No, far, far thank, away. No question. Thank, thank you so much for doing this. Enjoy thank your thank you. game this afternoon. That should be a lot of fun. Well, I get to play golf with my son, Tom, and a couple of his buddies, and that's always fun because we don't get to see each other that much, and he's in Vegas. So uh, I'm playing golf, Then we're leaving town this afternoon because of the big race, the Smart. big F1 race, <laughs> which, Sarah, we're in a high rise, and they're going to go right by our building. Oh, wow. And that's it, great. And the race, take, the race takes place from 10 o'clock at night to 2 in the morning. Oh, geez. <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah, time you to go out of town. That, here's, here's, what time to actually, now. here's what we'll actually witness. Zoom! That'll be it. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, too. <laughs> so we're we're, we're going to go to Newport Beach and see see the rest of the family. Oh, but, that's great. Deal. Enjoy. Thanks. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you Thanks for, being for being here, here, Mike. Thanks, everybody. All right. Have and, a great holiday. Uh, we'll see you next time on Vulcan Coaches and Mentors.